Hi, welcome to another video on model context protocol and our focus is on the SSE transport, service and events transport. I have already made a couple of videos on it, but in this video, we are going to look at the entire execution flow from the client's point of view. Okay, so client must have two threads for SSE communication. Welcome to Techie Talks AI. I am Sri from Shogini. On this channel, we bring you hands-on demonstrations and insights into the latest tools and trends to help you get started with ease. Don't forget to subscribe and be a part of our journey into the future of technology. You can either use two separate threads or you can use async communication. So let's look at the flow. First thing the client has to do is to connect to the SSE endpoint of the MCP server. So in this Python example that we saw in the previous video, we use this asynchronous IO HTTP client session to connect to this SSE URL. Okay, so that is the first thing. And what do we get in response? Let's see. So in response, we get an event like this, which is an endpoint type. There are different event types that SSE can respond with. In this case, it is giving us the endpoint for further communication. So remember, first MCP client has to contact the MCP servers slash SSE endpoint. And in response, it'll, MCP server will give us, MCP server will give the client the endpoint for further communication. So this channel, SSE communication channel will be kept open by the client so that server can stream messages to the client whenever it wants. So here, the first thing that we get from the MCP server is the endpoint and also a session ID. So all further communication from the client to the server will happen on this messages slash endpoint with the session ID. So far is clear. And the next thing the client should do is so send the initialize request with a predefined payload. So next thing the client will do is to send an initialize request to the endpoint that we got, including the session ID, send this payload, a JSON payload, and we will get a response 202 accepted. Okay. So that is it. Just send the initialize request and you get back 202 accepted. Then what happens is, client will send the initialized notification and it will post to the same messages endpoint with session ID. This time the payload is notifications initialized, so which is the initialized notification and we will get back 202 accepted from the MCP server. Now, normal communication can continue where you could ask the MCP server to list the tools or execute tools. So, in this example, we are going to execute the fetch tool, which is the MCP server. This demo MCP server tool is called fetch tool, which is from the Python SDK of model context protocol website. Okay, so here, Again, we are posting to the same messages endpoint with the session ID. This time, the method is tool call. And in the parameter, we are calling the name of the tool, which is called fetch. And in the arguments, we are giving the URL to fetch. So this is a simple URL, which just gives 200 OK. So what is this call? This is actually the call that is contacting the tool inside the MCP server. Okay, and we will get 200 accepted. Finally, the reply comes, guess from where? Through the SSE channel that we opened at start. So that SSE channel is going to respond back with the message. And this is the result of the tool call. Clear? So that is the entire SSE handshake or the workflow. 
So a quick recap of the communication or the handshake that is happening. This is the server. This is the client. So client will contact the SSC endpoint. Okay. And then, so here, server will give back the session ID and this connection is going to stay connected throughout. So unlike normal HTTP connection, we will not stop the connection. This will be the SSE connection. Okay, and then we initialize the session. So we have the server, we have the client, and this this connection is on, but client will send an initialize connection. Okay, and next is server. This connection is on. That is the SSC connection, and this time client will send the initialized notification. So this is the SSC endpoint and this is the slash messages slash endpoint. Okay. Then, then comes the final tool call. That also happens through the messages endpoint. Okay. So far is clear. And then the final response to the tool call comes through the SSC channel. So if your tool call response is very big, a PDF document or a streaming or an audio video file, etc., it can come to the client through the SSE channel. So the final response comes through this. Is this clear? So this is going to be very, very clear. Now we will begin implementing SSE protocol for our real world MCP SAS application. Okay, so let's look at the communication. Let's start the MCP server on this terminal screen. So we have the MCP server listening on port 3001. Now, on another screen, what we will do is, we will connect the SSC channel using command line curl. And see here, we got the session ID. What I'm going to do is, I am going to save this session ID for our further communications. Okay, so this ping you can ignore for now that we will discuss in subsequent videos. But this session, SSC channel has been opened on this terminal screen. Now let's simulate the client interaction. I already have a shell script made which will step by step execute the command. And remember all these commands are going to slash messages endpoint. So press any key to send the initialize payload. We saw that. Enter. See this initialize payload. We got the accepted. Okay. So this is HTTP 202 accepted. Press any key to send initialize notification payload. Okay. So now here we got through the SSE channel we got the capabilities response from the MCP server. Now we are sending the notifications initialized payload and for which there is no reply expected from the SSC channel. And finally, we are sending the tool execution payload. Pressing enter, sending the tool execution. We are executing the fetch tool with the URL as the argument. And here, on the SSC channel, we have the reply. This is the response from the tool, which is fetching the URL. Clear? So this is the entire flow. If you have any questions, please come by the comment section. Please like, share and subscribe and see you in the next video.